Hey everybody, our Gen Con has finally come to an end, and now we're going to show you all the stuff that we got while we were there, so... Uh, welcome to our end of the convention, super slam, mega interesting, super cool, design bad mitten. You're not even saying words. Pump. <laughs> Unboxing. Stump. Unboxing. Back. Yes. Back con That's video. enough. Okay, we'll start with Alex. One of the smaller little things I got is this little guy. It's just a little puppet. It has little controls so you can move the head around. Just a neat little thing. And soulless, unblinking eyes. It's like a furry or feathery podling, like drained podling from the Dark Crystal. I got a Fate deck for the Malifaux game. It is also for the Through the Breach um, role-playing game. Which one did you get? Arcane Fate deck. Ah. <laughs> it's the one that's specifically used for it. It has the different Malifaux suits and other things of that nature. More on that later. And also, I picked up the Kronos game which is a really interesting looking role-playing system. The, we'll probably do a video on it later though, but, but to go oh, like a lot we now. more in depth. She's a part of us. Slowly but surely. slowly assimilate you like some sort of amoeba. <laughs> now I want you to yell, you be, Tetsuo! You will be the no. cutest I don't know that of reference. seven rooms. It's from Akira. I but can feel Calvary you don't, dying. You don't. I've never watched Akira. I don't know anything. <laughs> I haven't watched Akira either. I haven't either. You've never watched Akira? Oh, well, that gets remedied. They said what they do, like 42 people? Yes. They've resolved it in how long? 10 minutes. Uh, 10, 10 minutes. minutes. 10 minutes. With this system. A 42 is... person mass combat in 10 minutes in a LARP. The second time they messed with it. It wasn't like experienced people either. That is impressive. And I, that's honestly all I've really got. I didn't get much this year at Gen Con. That's what, all you got? Yeah. I'm shocked. I thought yeah. you like, were carrying around all kinds of swag. Not really. Huh. I was carrying around your swag. <laughs> I was going to say, he was schlepping, you know, uh, various other people's stuff. Our resident pack mule, Alex. <laughs> oh. Guess me. All right. Hi, Laura Keith. Guess what you're in? What's up? I said, guess what you're in? You're in Roleplay Roulette's uh, unboxing Gen Con video. Hello? Hello. Are you perhaps now? Uh, no. I can just barely hear you right there. The smallest thing I got was this little portal turret. It was super cute. It was from a grab bag, a little little blind box, and mine is the brick one. Also, I got the Romans of the Nine Empires expansion. It has a bunch of cards for the other factions, but also the Arcanics is a big addition. We got Dark Dungeons. Humans and Household, which comes packaged with Natural One. Um, this is uh, Dead Gentleman Zombie Orpheus. This is a Zombie Orpheus helped produce. Absolutely fantastic. Everyone should pick up a copy. Uh, especially if you are a role player or know someone who is into the dangerous hobby of role playing. I also have the Project Manhattan book, and I have the Project London. Uh, graphic novel, but it is not here with me, which makes me sad because it also had all my Prince of Gen page that she signed for me and was giving away for free because she's awesome. I got Pony Finder, which is a Pathfinder based, um, I don't want to say module, because it's its own thing, but it's, it's basically a module. It's fantastic. I love it. You can play more than ponies. My favorite of which is a sun cat. They also have phoenix wolves. And I got Munchkin Apocalypse because they sold out of Munchkin Adventure Time, and I'm stupid I didn't get it the moment I saw it. Apparently, bringing enough was not possible, because more than one place sold out. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's yours. Oh, what did I get? Oh. More shirts. And I have one other shirt. Just the one? Yeah. Well, the one that uh, you don't have with oh, you. Oh, my God. They gave us the wrong shirt. I was supposed to have a Chibi Tiamat shirt, but they gave me the stupid propaganda one, and I'm really upset about that right now, actually, because the TV team out was cute. So, never mind. Uh, like and I got this Richard shirt I'm wearing, and I got a Vimo shirt, which is in the wash, and I got a brown coat shirt. It has stuff on the back, too. I am to misbehave. Misbehave a little. Do, do some misbehave. No. Do it. No, and also we got do this nice uh, bean puppy cat bag. 
I, I, I need to see some misbehavior. Stop. No, I'm not going to misbehave. Aww. And then I guess Jonathan's I guess there. not not doing what you're told is misbehaving. I say, in a way, you're so misbehaving right now. Oh, man. Do we totally have to make the little puppet thingies do stuff? <laughs> oh, no. We gotta make puppet things. Do other things. I like we'll about do all some the... things. <laughs> Alright. And those things. I lie about the last thing that I got. Where are your dice? I got the set of Gen Con dice. Which turned out to be red dice this year. I got a haul this year. Uh, let me oh, have that's a, what the, this is a haul video. Bag. Yes. Yes. We'll call um, it uh, Kids in the Hall. I don't think that's copywritten. <laughs> I don't think that one's I don't think anybody will mind. No, no. Who remembers Kids in the Hall? Wait, uh, everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Obviously, okay. both of you did. So, oh, I forgot something too. So, all right. And I oh. also got this super sweet notebook from The Strange, which is autographed by Monty Cook. Look at that. So I stopped by the booth uh, to talk to a gentleman named Ben Rogers from Harsh Realities, and their pro their flagship product is a universal system called Success. See what they did there? Uh, and success is, one, like I said, it's a universal system. It doesn't have a campaign setting of its own. Designed to be sort of a, a rules-light, easy-to-use way of telling any story you happen to want to tell. It's a universal system, but they're releasing a whole bunch of different campaign settings for it. The first of which is going to be, I believe, Promised Sands. Now this is a uh, an adapt. It's going to be an adaptation of this book. This book uses its own engine, but they bought the rights to it and they're adapting it to success. I've not had a, a chance to thoroughly digest this. Those guys really like uh, little titles like that, don't they? Success, Promised Sands. Yeah. Uh, the other ones they were talking about, they were talking about Invasion of the Fourth Reich, which is apparently an alternate universe victorious Nazi party, finds out that the uh, our world's Nazis lost and sets out to correct that mistake. Stardust, which is really strikes me as being very Firefly-ish. If that makes any sense. Um, again, looks like it's got some really uh, some interesting ideas. I'm looking forward to uh, to delving into this one a little bit. Speaking of having a tissue. Then a while ago, I picked up the new Fantasy Flight Edge of the Empire, new Star Wars RPG system, and the com and a and a hue and a cry came up from the uh, from how did, the. How did you How did you pick that up a while ago? They just put it out yesterday. This This has been out for a year and a half. Yeah, but their Star Wars game just came out yesterday. Okay, <laughs> so as I was as I was leading up to a hue and a cry um, from people who uh, shall remain, remain nameless, Fox, because this book, while claiming to be a Star Wars book, does not have Jedi. Uh, the, there are no playable Jedi in this book. It focuses on the galactic underworld, the criminal criminal element. So, in order to correct this and to silence the whining, I, I picked up the beta. Fine, the concerns fully justified <laughs> outrage. Fine. The concerns, the, the, the reasonably justified concerns. I picked up uh, the beta rules to the another book in the series called Force and Destiny. And this is chock full of Jedi-ness. So, uh, I'm just glad they finally put out Star Wars. Yes. People have so, been waiting for a long time. You could tell it's a Star Wars book because it's full of Jedi. <laughs> there are some may realize I'm into the wargaming aspect as well. This is the second book for Malifaux Second Edition, a very character-driven skirmish miniatures game set in a fantastic horror, wushu, steampunk, and a bunch of other things mashup setting. And what is what Malifaux? What what this book basically does is it takes all the book, all the all the models that were not covered in the Malifaux Second Edition book that existed in First Edition. Brings them up to speed, adds a slew of new stuff. Wait, dude, there's an X on the end of that. We're gonna have to do all this over. What? <sighs> okay. <laughs> so Malifaux. <laughs> now you're thinking, well, this is well, we do role play roulette, and I was like, I've always wondered, I've always wanted there to be an RPG. I always thought this would make an amazing RPG setting. So they made it. <laughs> they made it. This is through the breach. Through the breach just came out at, I believe, at Gen Con. We've actually been waiting on this one for uh, a while. Been waiting on this one for a while. Ever since we found out that Malifaux was making its own uh, RPG, we actually demoed uh, through the Breach um, last year at Gen Con. <laughs> I'm All gonna right. kick you right in the nards. Through the Breach. <laughs> yes, obviously from the Welsh. 
<laughs> um, but anyway, uh, this is looking pretty solid as well. Card driven rather than dice. And interesting. Hence the, as I said, more on that later, that's what the, uh, the Fate deck is for. Oh, you finally got those. More wargaming stuff. Well, I've had this one for a while. This is Drop Zone Commander, using high-speed transports to move units around and such. Very cool. But the supplement, which is called Reconquest Phase 1, uh, which adds a new faction and adds to each additional fa or each original faction, uh, looking like solid stuff all around. Very, very cool. Wish I'm actually... I had anyone to play with, play it with. I'm actually well, I'm actually concerned about that because I, I I genuinely think reconquest is not a word. I think it's just conquest, like no matter how many times it's been taken. Uh huh. And last, but certainly not least, I have the newest game from Money Cook Games. This is The Strange, which is a woo The Strange. Uh, a game we've been waiting on it uses yeah. the same. Cypher engine that Numenera uses, a recent successful game, Numenera. And the strange seems to be a sort of thing where characters travel between other worlds that they refer to as recursions that seem to have been sort of drawn from popular fictional continuities in, again, what we think of as the real world. So there's, there's a Sherlock world. You might be able to go to 221B Baker Street and and consult with Sherlock Holmes or take a spin through Wonderland, or end up in Oz, or Sherlock whatnot not else. Sometimes he stabs pigs! I... <laughs> what? He had to spare a pig in uh, um, uh, uh, the Hound of Baskerville. Well, oh, I had yeah. no idea, well, I had no idea that it Sherlock Holmes was cool. He's a pig sticker! Well, I had no, I had no, I had no idea. Pig. Pig it was a Oh, okay, well that's, that's okay. <laughs> For some reason, I just kept walking past them and not being able to find them, no the last that. day of the con, walked past and said, holy crap, The Strange. The Strange is I've been awesome. looking for this the whole time. Yeah. And on so, top of that, we ran into Monty Cook. Oh, and we ran into Monty Cook, you don't need to talk who about that. was good enough to sign it somewhere. Because we're to awesome. Oh, and we, I keep saying Monty Cook. Ran into Monty Cook and Bruce Cordell, the co-writers of the, of the book, and was able to get an autograph, so I was really pleased about that. Got the to... Strange. Uh, it's like quantum leap meets in the mouth of madness. I'm just going to let Fox do the rest of this. Uh, it's his turn anyway, so I'm just going to let him do this. I'm going to have Dolly. So. <laughs> do the thing with so. the thing. I don't know what it's called. It's a Did cat. It out? It's a cat. <laughs> this is another one of the little things like what was the owl... Uh, it's the same mechanics. The lift up the head, head and move it time That is that is staggeringly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it's funny. No, it's not. I I, it's I don't sad. agree really. But. Will make our viewers laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about a little bit of showmanship. You should go ahead and tear your tail. But yeah, this is the same kind of thing as the owl, but this one actually sits on the shoulder with a metal plate that you put underneath your shirt, and they have a magnet in, well, pretty much in their butts. Butt and magnet. they just, yeah, a butt magnet, and they just sit on there. That's have a chorus of butt magnet. I'll say butt magnet, and then somebody else say butt magnet, and then somebody else say butt magnet. We're not but let's, magnet. let's do the opposite of that. Now everybody who watches this video is going to be like, oh. Nobody cares. There better not be a comment chain of just butt magnets. Uh, I'm going to be angry oh. for a comment chain of butt magnets. The other main thing that I got was this little blue dragon dude. He has a wire in him, so like he can bend around. When I got him, I was wearing him around my wrist like this, but better. I still got a fun name for him. Can I suggest Mathers R. Willerby? <laughs> no, that's not a dragon name. <laughs> that is not that's a dragon not an name. 1880s butler. How about Flames Buchanan? <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually kind of like Flames Buchanan. Hand me a thing. Well, John. Ah, I was just slowly zooming in on you by accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the people want. No. They gotta push Fox for SummerSlam. Ah, oh, so hot. Oh, this game is complete and total sex. No, that's the graphic novel I couldn't find. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. I found it for you. Yay. <laughs> I'm a hero. Yay, my Prince of Kentane. Yes.
This is the graphic novelization of the movie Project London. We have it. We backed it on Kickstarter. You should check it out. Because we're cooler than you are. Don't be a fuddy-duddy. And we got a replacement for my Demon Hunter's <laughs> A new copy book. of Demon Hunter's book, because I broke the last one. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, I finally got a copy of the Iron Claw Omnibus, which I've been meaning to do for years and years and years, rather than just having the individual books. I bought him the player's handbook for Christmas one year, but it wasn't good enough. We had to get the Omnibus. Why well, you gotta Omnibus my balls? Uh, someone has to. I also have the Iron Claw Book of Magic. Book of Mysteries. Book of Mysteries. It is the Book of Mysteries, <laughs> which is the actual title. Yes. Well, it's full of magic. It's probably true. Probably also Jonathan, full of Jonathan, why do you gotta Omnibus my balls? Well, I feel, I feel that every submarine needs a screen Where's door. It? I finally got a copy of this. I've been wanting to get a copy of this for a good long time. Uh, this is Golden Sky Stories, which is a role-playing game. You can also find uh, through our Google Plus page to theirs. I'm sure there's probably a Facebook also, but I never got around to doing that. Uh, pastoral role-playing. Uh, apparently you play Little Animal Spirits. is written by a Japanese person named Ryo Kamiya and Tsukihagi Kanpo. It was translated by Starline, who also did uh, Tenro Bancho Zero and are working on Ryutama, which I also really want to see. If Tim watches this, which he probably will, I got my own copy of Savage Worlds Deluxe, so I'm reading that and learning how that works. Since I didn't have my own actual hard copy, while we were out chatting up Monty Cook at the Monty Cook booth, I got my own copy of Numenera, which is super hype. And I also got it signed by Monty Cook somewhere. That, I prefer to think that I saved the day. Yay. You did save the day, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, we, we appreciate when people do the right thing, even if they only do it eventually. Yes. All things in its time. All yep. things in, in their time. So now I can freaking run around Let's... the ninth world doing killer stuff and breaking people open. My shirt is the cover of the Player's Handbook for 5th edition. Oh, they just accidentally gave me the fucking propaganda shirt instead of a TV game that. I'll just, we'll get you a new one and I'll wear the propaganda shirt because I think it's cool also. But uh, yours would have been better. The one you wanted would have been better. I also got a shirt with uh, a bunch of characters from ElfQuest on it, which I don't have with me, because I already wore it, and it's in the sh laundry. Uh, Do you there... say shower? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I can't be held responsible for every little thing that comes out of my mouth. Actually, that's how responsibility works. Yeah. Hey, freedom of speech means I get to say whatever I want with no consequences. That's... On the other hand, if we held him uh, accountable for absolutely everything that left his mouth, we would never stop slapping him. <laughs> so, and that would be tiring. Talk about what you got. We bought this actually at our friendly local game store, but I'm going to show it off for a second anyway. Um, I actually got this at Gen Con last year, but it, I brought it to play around with. It's gother than now. It's uh, the most pretentious card game ever made, okay. where you try to out-goth other people. It's uh, fantastic, you and got of the course, pretty one. there's my Malifaux deck, which is the best one. It is. Because I have the best taste in uh, Malifaux. The reason why I didn't get this one is because it's actually just a deck of cards you could play an actual card game with it. This one is specifically has all of the Malifaux suits and special art for each of them. Like oh, ooh, la -di -da, so basically look Fox at me. got the wrong one. Is what <laughs> ooh, ooh la -di -da, look at me. Sorry. I know how to pick and choose things with discretion and discrimination so that I know that I get what I actually want and then just talk about it with using sounds out of my Shut fancy up, word mouth hole. That's, That's what you do all the time. That's your job. Well, ooh la -di da I know how to retort. <laughs> this, this, this sounds about things like person with the mouth word. Talk about the damn handbook. Uh, I got the player's handbook for 5th edition, and it is super hype. Super sweet. Super hype. Uh, I like almost everything about this new edition. I think monks have too many attacks. That's it. Is it possible for monks to have too many attacks? Um, depends on whether you're the monk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our loop. Uh, no, it's not, because I, find I also got Horde of the Dragon Queen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I picked that up as well. Yeah. It's uh, the beginning of this hu their new huge Story epic storyline, which uh, also I'm going to use this as an example of my new uh, go-to joke for 5th edition, which is, we got to push Forgotten Realms for SummerSlam. Oh, Everything on the end. Yeah, look at that. We're right there. There's Baldur's Gate. There's Waterdeep. There's Neverwinter. Right along the Sea of Swords. Well, um, it is a Norath. I fucked up. That's okay. I want to see. I want. I want a hundred comments 
first I want a chorus of butt magnets, and then I want a chorus of Yeah, this actually is supposed to be magnets to NORAD like it was a city. How do you even spell any of that? <laughs> With a lot of umlauts and a tilde. Well, not over nothing, anything, just off Well, I'm of the opinion that nothing can have too many umlauts. No. So, yeah. and the right. umlauts equal so badass. Look at this giant pile of loot. Ah. It's pretty awesome. And all of this is review fodder. I was saying, some of this might be review material. We don't know. A little bit of it. Just maybe. We feel like it. Bye! Bye.